Good morning, and thank you all so much for joining us here today. Uh, we're here to roll out uh, the Hawaii Health Connector, but also have an opportunity for you to hear about all the wonderful things that have been going on that is a coordinated effort across state government and the private sector. I want to first acknowledge Governor Abercrombie and thank him so much for being with us today. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to him and let him open this press conference for us. Thank you. Thank you, Coral. Aloha, everybody. Aloha. Oh, that's what I like to hear, a bubbling enthusiasm <laughs> for all this. No, no. Aloha. This Aloha. is a, uh, thank you very much, because this is a, a terrific day. Uh, uh, I, I've had the opportunity in the last couple of days to or, or the obligation the last couple of days to say that a speaking opportunity was all, actually a little bit of a selfish opportunity uh, for me uh, because of the, the context uh, of, of the gathering that I was at. One was the gender equity uh, conference at the UH uh, yesterday um, that celebrated Patsy Mink and, and everything that she put into motion back in 1972. Uh, with regard to gender uh, equity. Uh, we even have gender equity here today, Alicia Dow and, and, uh, and uh, uh, her cohort from Hilo High School over here, uh, the insurance commissioner, Gordon Ito. Um, so, you know, that, the, to, to have known Patsy and to, and, and, and to know what a tremendous accomplishment was associated with some activity there um, in, in, from someone from Hawaii uh, gave me an opportunity to celebrate that. And then last night at the, at the UH, um, uh, the, the Language uh, Summit Initiative, uh, the Language Leadership uh, Initiative, where we're, we're going to try and, and uh, not try, we're going to succeed uh, on a leadership basis in the Asia Pacific area of making Hawaii a center for, for uh, 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 language opportunities. Uh, we have more uh, people speaking more languages, the diversity of language in, in Hawaii continues to be uh, uh, a hallmark of uh, the diversity uh, in Hawaii, language leading the way, and the opportunity to explore that and give the opportunities to young people is just tremendous, and I just love speaking about it because it was just an idea in our heads a, a year ago, and now it's come to tremendous fr fruition. And so today, uh, I get to celebrate it as well. Uh, three years ago, uh, one of the, uh, the uh, uh, planks, if you will, in the, in the platform that I had and about in, in my New Day for plan was health, health care uh, for everyone in Hawaii. And one of the, the uh, uh, main items that I had uh, in writing, right, was uh, build on every federal health care reform opportunity uh, in Hawaii. Uh, the legislation signed by President Obama creates new requirements for the state for which we must be prepared, numerous opportunities to obtain federal help, upgrading our system of health care, improving care for the needy, expanding the use of health care technologies, increasing the numbers of health care professionals, supporting seniors and small businesses, and securing funding for hospitals and health centers. I mean, that's why we're here today. That's what's being celebrated today, um, the, the, the connector. Uh, and, and the speakers that you're going to, to hear uh, momentarily uh, are going to be doing precisely that. It's a terrific day uh, uh, for Hawaii. Uh, the uh, information uh, uh, press is, is underway. This is, this is part of that information outreach going out to the whole community. You'll be getting, uh, for example, you have uh, the Hawaii Health Connector uh, uh, brochures and, and pamphlets and, and uh, information of all kinds uh, that will be coming forward for everybody. Uh, this is a, a launch. Uh, the Hawaii Health Connector launch is uh, starting today. Um, we're going to be expanding community health centers, we're going to be addressing the physician shortage, expanding the use of information, healthcare technology, uh, rebuilding literally the health infrastructure of the state. Um, and it's going to hit those people, it's going to affect those people who are most in need of having it done. Uh, everybody's aware of the progress that we've made uh, in, in health care in terms of insurance in, in Hawaii that predates uh, much of the activity on the mainland and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and uh, predates uh, what the Congress uh, uh, accomplished uh, just uh, recently 
with moving for, forward with the Affordable Care Act. So it's going to principally affect about 100,000 people uh, in the state, and that's going to be expli explicated by the folks who will, will be following me. This is indeed uh, something that has become uh, a little bit of a cliche in people's minds, but this is a literal um, uh, example of, of a private and public partnership uh, in action. All the stakeholders are included today. There was some little bit of controversy when we got started. They said, oh, how come you're bringing everybody in? Can't we separate the hospitals from the insurance companies, from the providers, and so on? That's one of the things that's happened before. People had, had silos that they were in. This, we overcame that. We brought everybody in and asked everybody to participate. And I can say without reservation or equivocation uh, that the, uh, the capacity to collaborate and coordinate among all sectors in the healthcare community is exemplified by uh, what you'll hear today. So I want to acknowledge all those who have put in countless numbers of hours to meet the federal requirements, to work together in a collaborative basis, to meet the deadlines, to assure that Hawaii uh, will be among the first, if not the first, in the nation to fully accommodate the Affordable Care Act and its implementation. The Hawaii Health Connector uh, uh, is our new contact center uh, for health care in Hawaii. I couldn't be more pleased to be here. I could not be more pleased to acknowledge and congratulate uh, everyone uh, who will be speaking to you today, not just as an individual seeking some kind of individual recognition, but as representatives of the literally hundreds of people who have helped put this uh, together today and speaking on behalf of the hundreds of thousands that will benefit uh, in the state of Hawaii. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor Abercrombie, and thank you for your support throughout this last year and a half, nearly two years. Um, I know uh, we certainly appreciate it. I want to start out by just saying to each of you, oh, well, I'm Coral Andrews, the Executive Director for the Hawaii Health Connector, that as you listen to each of us today and really building upon what the Governor just uh, uh, remarked to in his uh, concluding comments is this really is about our community. You know, we each stand before you because we play a specific role in our jobs, but the focus and orientation in bringing this opportunity to our community is because we want to leverage the full uh, value of the Affordable Care Act and build upon the Prepaid Health Care Act here in Hawaii to expand opportunities for individuals and small businesses to be able to have access to insurance coverage. Um, it's what will help lift up so many of the other um, activities across our um, state and provide um, economic value as well. The Hawaii Health Connector was established as a nonprofit organization statutorily in 2011. And it was done so through Act 205, but it's a part of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Without the federal law being passed, Hawaii would not be able to establish a state-based marketplace. Pridefully, Hawaii is, um, again, demonstrating its commitment to being cutting edge in its thought processes around uh, health care and um, uh, based on what happened in 1974 when the Prepaid Health Care Act passed. I want you all to understand that as we've gone about building this organization um, from scratch, that we've done so in a way where we've given intentional thought to what is already here existing in our community. As I look over to David Giroff and his colleagues, you know, we wanted to make sure that we did not take away from what is already working in our community. We wanted to build upon that and really just seed ourselves in and complement what's already uh, working and providing access to our individuals and small businesses. So I do want to acknowledge the staff of KKV for hosting us today and also for the work that you are already doing. We have in our audience a couple of our um, elected officials. I want to acknowledge you all, Representative Mizuno, Representative Kachola, Representative Morikawa, um, you all have had a hand in being there with us along the way as well, and we look forward to continuing to seek your guidance and, um, and your support as this is just the beginning 
Um, October 1st is a random date, but it's something that uh, definitely there's still 180 days more of runway through this open enrollment period. Over the next six months, what you all will see is continued outreach and efforts by all of us to ensure that our community is informed of what's going on. The Affordable Care Act is a very broad piece of legislation and it can be confusing. And so know that we're out there trying to provide clarification to our community, answer their questions. And one of the ways we're doing that and leveraging what's available to us is through our marketplace assisters. Those are organizations that are represented on every island and they are, KKV is an example of that. We wanted to make sure that we were partnering with organizations that already have those relationships in their communities. You all know our culture and individuals within our, community, within our community are much more likely to seek guidance and assistance when they're doing so in, um, in contact with trusted sources. We have our contact center, which has just recently opened on Sunday, and I want to acknowledge our Maximus contractor who's here. The phone numbers um, we can make available to you all at the end of the press conference. Additionally, we have the map, mapping to each of those marketplace assister organizations, direct links available on our website, so anyone can click on a link in their community and be able to find access to their organizations. I know that we'll have more opportunities for questions and answers as we go through this press conference, but I do also want to make sure that I offer time for the colleagues around me to be able to share with you the activities that they have underway. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Director McManaman, Director of Human Services for the State of Hawaii. I was actually surprised that the governor didn't use the word transformative. What will launch on October 1st is nothing less than transformative. It will reshape not only the delivery of health care across the nation, but it will reshape the delivery of health care for Hawaii's residents. When Congress passed the Medicaid Act, not only did they intend that individuals who are under 100 of under 400 percent of poverty have access to more affordable care and that workers have access to affordable care. But Congress also intended that there be expanded Medicaid coverage for all residents across the United States. And I'm proud to sit here, stand here and tell you that Governor Abercrombie rose to that challenge and that effective October 1st uh, Medicaid eligibility will expand in Hawaii for the poorest of the poor. Just by way of example, Children will now be covered up to 308% of poverty under um, the Medicaid program. Pregnant women up to 196% of poverty. And all other non-aged, blind, and disabled adults up to 138% of poverty. Importantly for Medicaid recipients uh, who are not age, aged, blind, or disabled, there will no longer be an asset test. This is a new nationwide standard. Um, that is not only going to reduce administrative burdens uh, for departments like the Department of Human Services, but it's really also quite a heavy lift for the poorest of the poor to gather documents of um, their resources uh, for annual renewals and even initial applications. Uh, so lifting of the asset test um, is also significantly um, transformative across the nation. Um, one small thing that will distinguish us um, from the Hawaii Health Connector, our partner, um, is that effective October 1st, not only will individuals be able to apply for Medicaid through our new electronic Medicaid um, application called COLEA, but we'll also be one of the first states in the nation to, um, uh, as an early adopter, to also enroll into Medicaid effective October 1st, those individuals who are eligible. So um, we want to reach out to the community if they believe that they've been excluded because of an asset limit or um, that they could benefit from the uh, higher rate of poverty levels. October 1st, um, we're up, we're ready, um, and we welcome you to uh, join us at our new Kalea portal. 
Uh, the, the new Kalea portal um, is really just another opportunity that the governor spoke to about shared partnership, leveraging f uh, federal resources and making sure that Hawaii has its fair share of those resources. The Kalea eligibility system is 90% federal funded. The Department of Human Services will take that technology. We will leverage it across all of the other executive departments in the state as well as our own divisions. So hopefully within a year or two, you're you're going to see SNAP benefits online. You'll see uh, financial assistance online. We'll be able to leverage the technology for our most vulnerable adults and adult protective services, as well as our keiki who are abused, neglected, and or abandoned. Um, one great um, feature of this partnership and the good news is that for applicants who um, come to DHS seeking service, who um, are determined ineligible by our standards, your application, your electronic application will be seamlessly handed off to the connector and the connector will then determine whether or not you might be eligible for other cost savings through advanced premium tax credits and or cost share reductions. So I think this is one um, significant um, and viable um, point uh, where this partnership um, really is effective and um, will advance the needs and um, for all residents of Hawaii. Finally, just um, one point um, that we do want to assure current uh, Medicaid recipients um, do nothing October 1st. Your Medicaid will continue. And um, in fact, we've also received permissions from the Centers um, for Medicaid Services to um, extend our renewal period. So um, the message is do nothing. We've got you covered. We've got your back. We will continue to take care of you. Thank you. Thank you, Director McManaman, and thank you for your leadership. This time, I'd like to bring forward the Insurance Commissioner, Gordon Ito. <laughs> yeah, before, before I get into what I was going to say, I, I really like to express um, the appreciation for the Governor and really for Director McManaman, because what she had talked about was really on the DHS side and the Medicaid eligibility and uh, enrollment side that they have worked so hard with. And I'm not sure if many people realize that not all states have chosen to go on the Medicaid expansion. And Hawaii was one of the first, if not the first, to, to seek that. And so it's really to the credit of the governor and, and the director, Matt Manaman. What I'm talking about or will be talking about is on the private insurance market side. Hawaii really has been a leader in health insurance for more or nearly 40 years since the passage of the Prepaid Health Care Act in 1974. Um, but with that, even though Hawaii was at the forefront, um, the Affordable Care Act will provide um, additional benefits and enhancements to our insurance plan as well as the marketplace. So starting January 1st, some of the benefits that will occur is, I think, which is one of the key elements of ACA, or the, the Affordable Care Act, is that anybody who wants to purchase health insurance will be able to purchase health insurance. No insurance company can deny health insurance plan because of pre-existing medical conditions. So that's going to start January 1st. Other things that will occur is four additional benefits will be added to individual and small business plans. Prescription drugs, pediatric dental and vision, and habilitative services will also be included into health plans. Um, the other thing that will really happen was would, will be with respect to the connector and the connector going live on October 1st. With that will provide more transparency in the insurance marketplace. The insurance division, really to the credit of the division staff, we've been working for years to, to help the connector go live on October 1st. So it's very exciting for us to see that. What that will be or enable individuals and small businesses to do is to go and shop and compare on the connector's website for um, the, their health insurance benefits and costs. They'll, make, they'll be able to make choices now. Um, the, con the insurance division, um, we were under the gun um, because under ACA, we had to approve health plans to be sold on the connector. So the division was kind of joking and say, well, the connector could li go live, but if we didn't meet the August 31st deadline, they wouldn't be able to sell anything, yeah. right? And so the, to the credit of the staff, I mean, 
there will be more choices for uh, individuals and small businesses because the division by the uh, August 31st deadline approved 95 plans to be sold on the connector. To put that into context, in the past, the division had uh, approved only about 20 to 30 plans a year. So individuals and uh, businesses, small businesses, will, will have a lot more choices with respect to um, purchasing of uh, plans. Um, and what one thing I'd like to enclose in, in kind of following up with Director McManaman's um, uh, comment, large employer groups, um, for the most part, uh, will not have to go to the connector, as well as individuals who are on Medicare. So I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that, but that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you, Gordon. And I do want to publicly acknowledge that our birth certificate was derived from Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs. Um, that's where we started when the Act two, uh, 205 passed in the 2011 session. Some of his staff are here and, you know, as Gordon did indicate, is there are many, many people that have had a hand in this. Um, Director Takamini, thank you. Um, Department of Labor and Ed, but there are so many people that have been involved. We're just standing here in front of you because of our individual responsibilities, but I don't want to fail to acknowledge that. At this time, I would like to turn it over to um, Kaiser's President Janet Liang. And as the Insurance Commissioner said, if we didn't have our issuer partners, we'd have nothing to sell on the exchange. So, thank Janet. You. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Um, I think you can tell from all the comments that you've heard and that you're going to hear from us that uh, this has truly been a labor of love for the people of Hawaii. Uh, we are committed to the mission and all the hours that we put in proves it, that uh, we want um, to have more affordable health care access for the people of Hawaii. And if you have been sick ever, and I know you all have, I have as well, if you ever had just even a flu, and if you've known anyone with a serious illness, you know that um, it's not possible to thrive in your life without health. It's a fundamental necessary need of to, to, to live, a, live a fulfilled life. And that is what we are doing with the launch of the connector and the plans that you're gonna see. Kaiser is very excited to be offering a very broad range of flexible options with, that offer a lot of choice for individuals. And uh, you're gonna see the kinds of designs and affordability that you've never seen before, I believe, here in Hawaii. And we have uh, built new facilities and we've hired new physicians um, with the expectation of lots of growth because we are going to close the gap, as Governor Amber Crabby said, on um, having uninsured people in Hawaii. I would love it if we could all be, Hawaii could be the first state to have universal coverage of all of its people. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Janet. This time I'd like to invite up HMSA's Senior Vice President of the Consumer Experience, Elisa Yadao. Thank you. Thank you, Coral. <laughs> Governor Abercrombie, thank you and congratulations. Gordon, Coral, congratulations on behalf of HMSA. David, thank you for having us here in this beautiful facility. HMSA has been providing health coverage to the people of Hawaii for more than 75 years, and we are so pleased to be part of the Hawaii Health Connector to ensure that those among us in our community who are in the most need of health care are going to get it. We're so fortunate to live in this place and we're never going to really realize our potential until we take care of everyone in our community. And that's why we're so happy to be part of the connector. We're fully committed to its success. I'm so happy to see all of you here today. And I want to congratulate everyone who's been a part of this and say to Gordon Ito in particular, glad you're still standing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. This time I'd like to invite our host up, Dr. David Duroff with Kokua Kalihi Valley. Aloha. Aloha. On behalf of the Board of Directors uh, and our 180 staff here at Kokua Kalihi Valley, it's my pleasure to welcome you, Gover Governor Abercrombie, and all of our distinguished guests in the press today to launch the Hawaii Health Connector. It seems fitting to us that the connector is being held, the launch is being held here today at Kokua Klee Valley. For the past 41 years, we have believed that building and sustaining connections with 
uh, and between our neighbors is the essence of how we fulfill our mission of healing and reconciliation. Why is this event significant for KKV? Last year, fully 40% of our patients, our 10,000 plus patients, were uninsured, 40%. Despite our best efforts to provide access to high quality, patient-centered health care to those we serve, whether they have insurance or not, we know that those without insurance suffer needlessly. Speaking as a family doctor, I can also tell you that providing excellent care to people without insurance is an enormous challenge. We are confident that the Hawaii Health Connector and the Affordable Care Act, especially through its Medicaid expansion and the premium subsidies, will significantly decrease that number of uninsured patients. But we also know that despite today's efforts, there will be still many in our communities who will be left without coverage. We must keep our sights set on universal health insurance for all Hawaii residents. And as well, at the federal level, we must work to pass comprehensive immigration reform, particularly as it addressed the unique concerns of our COFA population here in Hawaii. You know, as important as it is to have health insurance and to have access to high quality primary health care services, these are just one part of what our real focus must be, which is the health of our communities. At KKV, we understand that health literally means wholeness. This is the wholeness that comes from strong families, the sharing of foods, the celebration of vibrant languages and cultures, the love and care of our land, the love of learning, the joy of meaningful work, and the feeling of connection to our neighbors. So while many of you might already know about the high quality health services that Hawaii's federally qualified health centers and Kokua Kalia Valley have been providing, you might not know of the many, many ways that we are also deeply invested in this larger picture of health here in Hawaii. So as I don't often get a press platform, let me tell you about some of those ways. <laughs> Just a few um, of the many. Um, we are revitalizing a 100-acre nature preserve in the back of Kalihi Valley, Ho'o'ulu Aina, where last year over 11,000 volunteers of all ages came together to care for the land, to grow organic produce, to tend our precious watershed, and to build community. We restore every year hundreds of used bicycles as a way to mentor Kalihi Valley youth to health and success in life through our KVIBE program. We offer places where five days a week, hundreds of our elders come together to dance, sing, eat healthy food, and laugh together. And this cafe, we call it the Roots Cafe, as in the roots of health, a place we built to share the bounty of this community with all of you and with all the members of this community. We use produce from our gardens, we train community members in the working of a commercial kitchen, and we come together to enjoy wonderful, healthy Hawaiian food. I hope that some of you can join us today or in the near future here in our cafe. We are indeed honored to be a part of today's event and to be able to offer our kokua towards making the connector a huge success. And we are grateful to you, Governor, for your vision and leadership of a healthy Hawaii. We cannot do this work alone, so we look forward to building upon the strong relationships that already exist in this room uh, to act upon that larger vision. Mahalo for coming today. Thank you, David, for that. It's a great reminder of what we need to remain focused on. At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. David Sakamoto up from Department of Health.
Aloha. The Hawaii State Department of Health is very pleased to be a partner in the rollout of the Affordable Care Act. Today is indeed another milestone in our state's effort to ensure access to quality health care for everyone. Uh, we look forward to working with the Connector, the Marketplace of Sisters program, our state and private partners to reach those who until now have not had health care coverage in Hawaii. Access to affordable quality health care is the foundation for improving the health of our population and better health uh, leads to lower health care costs and a higher quality of living. The bottom line to all of the activities, all of the work that the connector has done, the insurance commissioner, other people in state government and our private partners, it's all about health. And our department believes that the work of the connector will lead to healthier islands, healthier communities, and healthier families. Uh, we look forward to working with, um, I'm sorry, uh, we all have a stake in improving the health of the people um, of Hawaii. We invite all of you to join us in sharing the information presented today and in helping to ensure that everyone has access to quality, affordable health care to improve the lives of all of our citizens. As we prepare to transition to questions and answers, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the board members who have joined us here today. They've provided the leadership, they volunteered, uh, they've put in a number of hours to be there with us along, the pro along that process and staff who are here as well. So I want to make sure that I do thank them. Um, Governor, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for the vision. Um, as you've heard from many of the folks here today, and what I want to express to you as well, is as you're out and about in your communities, the face of the uninsured doesn't have a particular face. So if we accomplish anything today, I want to make sure that we help reshape your awareness that there's not a stereotype, a stereotype for uninsured. It's, it's around us, it's people we know, people we care about, and so, if, if the services of the Hawaii Health Connector or any of those that you've heard today maybe don't directly affect you, please join in helping us to be able to get the word out to the people that you do know who need assistance and can benefit from any of these services. At this time, we'll transition to questions and answers. And if you all... Gordon, you don't go by Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what can you tell us about Rachel? Presently, we're working on doing a rate comparison sheet for the different metal levels for individual plans, which we, we so we're hoping that we'll soon release them. But one thing to remember with respect to rates is when the connector goes live um, on October 1st, individuals within 400% of federal poverty level um, will be able to get um, assistance. Um, and so their net out of pocket will be reduced. And so that's one thing I would like to caution. Um, we will do this uh, rate comparison sheet, but the, the net out-of-pocket really is until the connector goes live, individuals will not know what their true out-of-pocket cost will be. It's the, and the same will be for small businesses. And what is the poverty level? We've been talking about percentages, but what is the poverty I think in Hawaii, I think it's uh, 13,200 or something like that for an individual, single individual. Single individual, 13,000? Yeah. Yes. That's the low end. Yes, that does. I don't know the numbers, but I was going to say I want to encourage the press to help us get the word out that um, and we can get the numbers. So we can for family, for $108,000. Just so they can oh. hear you on the streaming. I was just going to say that uh, I want to encourage the press to help us um, get the message out that federal subsidies are available and it will net a different um, cost than you see on the exchange. And so what we want to do is make sure if we don't get it today, the dollar salary amounts level so that people can connect to do I qualify or not. It, up to 80% subsidy on your premium. Uh, so we just need to help to get the word out. But by us saying 400% yeah, so of poverty we, level means so nothing. Um, don't quote me on this. <laughs> uh, off the top of my head, for a family of four, the top end of that range is about one hundred and eight thousand dollars for a family of four. So it's it's a it's a considerable amount. At thirteen thousand, 
uh, 13,000 for single, that's the federal poverty level. At 108,000, that's uh, at 400 percent of the federal poverty level for a family of four. So, what's the poverty level for a family of four? 400 percent. <laughs> Sorry. I knew you were going to ask the question, so I didn't think it should. If you want us to get it out. Yes. So, for an individual, um, it's uh, at 100 percent federal poverty level, it's uh, $13,230 for Hawaii. Uh, for a family of four, um, it, uh, it goes up to $27,090 at 100% federal poverty level. So if you, if you go to 400% of federal poverty level for a family of four, it's 108360 Thank you. Gordon, Larry, I'm not sure if this is a question for you or for my people the providers, but um, can you just be a little more specific with the rate comparison sheet. What is your goal as far as what you want to see um, as far as competitive rates? I'm not sure if that's for you or for the providers. The, the comparison sheet will do is just to give individual an idea of um, what a bronze level plan, the average of all what we've done is we've gotten all the findings that with the 95 findings that we received that's going to be sold on the connector. And there's four metal levels under ECA, platinum, gold, bronze. I mean, Bond, gold, silver, and bronze plants. And so what we've done is average the, um, the premiums for all metal level, and that's what we're preparing to release. We also will be comparing uh, how Hawaii compares with other states for individual plants and at each metal level. Um, there, there's two big providers here, but what about, say, for example, HMA, UHA, and Family Health? Do they have any plans to join the reverse? Uh, uh, there are plans that um, we have approved for two of the three. One of the insured um, will have not submitted uh, the rate findings to us yet. But it's my understanding, um, not all of the uh, insurers outside of the connector or, or those that are not selling outside of the connector, not all of them, all of them sell individual plans. And, and just to make sure that people understand, they don't have to join the connector. That's an option, right? This is an option for people. Yes, I mean, that, that's correct. If, if small businesses, um, currently small business, and, and that's where we encourage small business in Hawaii to go and look at the tax credits that are provided under ACA because from 2010, if, an, if a small business that had 25 employees or less um, with an average um, salary income of 50,000 or less, and it's a sliding scale, um, both that small business for providing health care insurance can get a tax credit up to 35%. But it's a, it's a very slight, it's a sliding scale. Um, they could actually go to the IRS website and there's a calculator. So small businesses could go to the IRS site and do a calculation of whether they are eligible for credits or not. That credit goes up to 50% um, in, on January 1st, 20, 2015. Um, and also for individuals that we talked about, those within 400% of federal poverty level would be able to get you know, a reduction in their net out-of-pocket costs. But for those, for those individuals or small business who are not really eligible for credits, uh, you, know, you don't have to purchase through the health connector. This information is available for everyone. What? what information? Uh, can the public get this information? Employers get this information? Yeah, I mean, there, there are several good websites. So healthcare.gov, which is the federal site, is an excellent site that people should go to and, and look because it, it asks you a number of questions and then you can figure out what to do. It's a very good um, starting point. Uh, the Kaiser Family Foundation, uh, kff.org, is also another good source of uh, information on ACA. You can come to our website uh, and the connector website that provides uh, information. We view today as really as the starting point to start educating uh, people. This is the start, and so it will be a, a long process. And everybody in this room, I think, will be available to help people through the process in 2014. Is it about 100,000 people that you think? Is it? We, uh, oh, thank you so much. I thought we were at an auction as soon as I saw that. <laughs> oh, handle, uh, I was like, what are we selling? I figured I'd address the you were ready. You were ready. You get the prize. You're a Navy captain. Um, <laughs> I recognized it. You know, we are running short on time for questions. 
um, the governor so uh, astutely reminded me that we want to make sure we don't depart our time together without giving you the place to go to find answers to questions and which will continue to populate. As Gordon said, there are many websites out there. I do want to make sure that we offer you the hawaiihealthconnector.com. Um, I'll repeat that, hawaiihealthconnector.com. And our contact center did open on Sunday. We have representatives here. That phone number is 1-877-628-5076. Oh, right here. sorry, thank you. I was see how obedient, I followed my directions. Um, and then by email, answers at hawaiihealthconnector.com. I know that the uh, state of Hawaii also through the governor's office has the healthcare transformation website. So there's broad ACA and there's section 1311 which is really where we're focused on the health insurance exchange. The other thing is that many, many of the people, sorry, yes, many of the people um, who are going to be most interested in uh, uh, they're individually in, uh, in, in, in the health connector and, the, and the, the plans that are being offered here and the small businesses that will be eligible as well uh, for uh, 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 credits and, and support. This over here just passed at least you know, this number is going to become the most sought after number. I hope uh, uh, the star advertiser and and uh, I hope the, the TV uh, stations as well will print this real big. That would be a great headline. Uh, I'm serious. I'm serious about it. This, this is, yeah, but uh, I mean, get it out there. This number is the most important number. And uh, once people get that uh, and, and make the call, we have uh, people who are, are going to be very sensitive to the, uh, the questions that are coming in. They'll be patient. They'll be courteous. They'll take their time. This is the most important number. The most uh, of all the things being said today, this is the most important thing. Get this number out there, and uh, and then people will find out. Because as you can tell, just from what Gordon uh, had to say, there's going to be a whole spectrum of uh, of responses. There will be no one individual answer that's going to cover everybody. Uh, even uh, as David was saying, the 10,000 folks here and the 4,000 uninsured, there's a story with each one. There's a, everybody's going to have their own uh, individual story, their own individual needs, and that's what the, the, the really glorious part about all of this. This is geared to the individual business, it's geared to the individual himself or herself, it's geared to the individual family. And as a result of that, Everybody's going to be taken into account uh, according to the circumstances and conditions that they face. So you're not going to have to fit into uh, the health connector. You're not going to have to fit into the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care Act and the Hawaii Health Connector is going to fit itself to your individual needs. So get that number down and uh, believe me, there are people here who are going to be dedicating uh, the, the next weeks and months of their lives to making sure that each individual uh, person, uh, family, uh, small business and organization is going to get the answers that they need. Governor, while I have you up there. I, I think I was inches from a clean getaway. <laughs> uh, you know, we're talking about insurance coverage and treatment. Yes. Is the long range goal to get healthy people, healthy living? Isn't this like a de facto oh. for your new day plan? Yep. Well, <laughs> Can I quote you on my campaign? <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. The, believe me, it's not de facto. This is the result of the work. Uh, as as Carl said, everybody standing up here is representative of a, 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 a massive, a great mass of people, and an enormous number of hours, weeks, and months that have been put forward to do this. The object here, yes, obviously, is to make Hawaii the the, the healthiest state uh, that it possibly can be. And uh, from a logistical uh, point of view, that's what this is all about. We're about putting uh, faces on numbers. We're about, uh, the health connector is, is about putting action uh, behind intention. Governor, you, you were applauding or excited when he talked about universal health care. So what is the step, the step between what you have now, which you're excited about, and going One step closer. One step, no, 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 I mean, um, sorry, how do you see it being different? 
Well, because it's not universal health care yet. Um, and, and that's what uh, we want to aim to, toward. And this is a, a major step uh, in that direction. And we have a very, very firm foundation for that, better than, I think, better than any other state. Believe me, in my time in Congress uh, made it clear to me that uh, the pioneers, uh, the legislative pioneers, that are the legacy of which is represented by uh, the, the legislators here today, um, they set a precedent across the country for uh, local people, local communities, um, uh, taking charge of their own health care destiny. That foundation uh, was uh, uh, not only essential, uh, but uh, providential in 1974. But now events have caught up with that. The reason we're taking the next step now uh, is that the prepaid health care plan of 1974 uh, needs to meet with the Affordable Care Act uh, of, of 2013, uh, October 1st, and uh, is, is, is a logical consequence of what happened here in Hawaii in 1974. So I think people and, and, uh, and the legislature, including the folks that were, uh, are here today, uh, helped pass the act which enabled us uh, to uh, advance the Affordable Health Care Act as the next logical step from the Prepaid Health Care Act of 1974. We're on our way. Uh, I, I couldn't be more enthusiastic about it. And uh, as I say, please uh, take a look at this number. Uh, we are all about uh, seeing to it that every man, woman, and child in Hawaii has the best possible opportunity to have the best possible, possible health care and all that that means for the future of Hawaii. Thank you. This concludes today's press conference. I do thank you all so much for joining us. And again, thank you to our host here at KKB. Oh,